Hi guys, apologies if I have to keep pausing this video. I'm doing technical support for a parent, so we all know how that goes. Anyway, hair's up, glasses are on. We are talking about blog monetization today. Actually, I'm gonna take these off, that's extremely distracting, but. So, we're, yes, blog, website, side hustle, everything that involves basically like a website, monetizing, side hustles, everything. So it's a little outside of copywriting, but also kind of inside of copywriting if you want to grow your own site that's based around copy or whatever it may be. So this will probably get long, grab some water, grab some snacks, um, you know. This is the process I do as I plan out content. This is the process I do when I work with clients to help them monetize, to help them grow, to help them all the things. So, um, you know, and it may be different for everybody depending on what you're doing, you know, follow the bloggers you like and trust their advice, follow it. But this is what I do. So this is the process. Also, my handwriting is atrocious. I'm aware, let's, that's why I'm gonna try and hold it close and talk about it out loud. So. First of all, if you're an adorable site and need some kind of like theme, um, and sometimes that theme can be yourself, just know that lifestyle, personal blogs, personal content is much harder to grow because the product is your personality, so it has to be sellable, okay? Little hard, but like a theme, like travel, food, woodworking. Some kind of theme generally works the best, but if you want to go the lifestyle route, that's cool. Just know you've got a little bit more of an uphill battle than everybody else. Cool. Okay. But in general, that says the word levels. <laughs> you want me to write you guys a letter? Because it would be illegible forever. Um, but there are five levels with some optional things that you can do to kind of grow a website. So, and like the tiers of monetization and the tiers of like all the stuff, because most people want to jump straight to like donations and money and, and selling my eBooks and all of that. And they skip all of the essential steps and they just, which sometimes works, like don't get me wrong. There's always some weird case study that someone who like launches a blog in the first month has like, you know, 50 eBook sales right out the gate. That's nice. For the most part, for 99.9% .9 of us, okay, which just side note, you should always view your own work as like the traditional instead of some outlier. It just saves you so much energy and time instead of being like, why am I not making $10,000 a month? All these other bloggers do. Most of them don't. Most of them don't. That's just some Pinteresty gimmicky crap to get you to click and buy their ebook that will teach you how to sell a, to make a $10,000 a month blog. But Okay. So for the most part, that's not happening. Just treat Go through these steps. Okay, number one is audience building. You cannot avoid that step. There is no, you have to put in the work to build the audience, which means giving out a ton of free content, making some, you know, if you don't have the skills, like a lot of people who want to start like copywriting websites and they have no clients, and they're like, I'm an expert. I'm like, first of all, they know you're not. They, anybody in the business world can s smell it like you can smell newbie i'm so sorry everybody fake it till you make it is not a thing but there is a a you know document your process as you learn there is a you share what you start like you're discovering you you try experiments and you document them live and you're sharing the content and you're making all of this um you know, if you're a newbie, document what you're learning. If you're truly an expert and you've been doing something for a long time, or at least like enough to teach somebody, start teaching. That's gonna be a good, decent process to build up an audience to, and you can use some of these other strategies to make the audience building a little bit faster, especially the like growth and like social media and all that we'll get into in a second. But that is where you focus. I would focus on that level until you start hitting like at least a few hundred visitors a month, like at least give or take, because a lot of people will start writing eBooks. I've known a ton of people who launch their website and like they sell the eBook immediately and then they're so shocked that no one's buying it. And I'm like, who are you selling it to? And they're like, my, you know, three Twitter followers. And I'm like, okay, your grandma and your best friend from college like is not your audience, you know, like 
you need to build, build and build and build first. At least a few hundred people on some kind of platform somewhere will maybe at least get the ball rolling on social media. That's a lot lower. 400 Twitter followers is like nothing monetization wise unless they're extremely focused and niched, but like 400 email subscribers, a little different. So anyway, focus on that level until then. And once you have some signs of growth, you move on to opt in. Oh my, this is why like if I was ever written about in history books, which I would not be, but like, and they had to like translate my letters, they'd be like, ah, <laughs> we don't know what she said to anybody. Opt in. Opt-in is the next level. Now you now once you have a few hundred people visiting your blog, you know, um, and we'll get into content in a second and like how you build that first step and then like baby steps. But these are the five levels. Focus on where you're at before you stress yourself out and why you're not making millions of dollars. And then you just like quit. Don't quit. Quitting is stupid. Unless it unless you've, you know, analyzed a good reason to quit, like you're not passionate about the topic anymore, like blah, blah, blah. But like, if you're just frustrated about the numbers, especially in the first year, you should be pumping out like 100 to 200 blogs in like your first year or videos or something to build the momentum, just to give you some accurate idea of numbers. Okay, just to like put it in your mind. Quitting before that, just because the numbers aren't there, not because you've lost interest and passion. Bad idea. Okay. It took me a long time to build even my own. I've done it for clients so much faster because it's targeted and they're paying me money, which is way different than like my own. But I've put, um, I don't know, 10, 15 sites through like this whole process and mon monetize them. But anyway, opt-in. So now you want to make an email opt-in. You want to get people onto an email list slowly but surely just to, you know, and make it kind of interesting. Maybe you make a free opt-in or even just like, my suggestion because a lot of people nah, nah, we're all losing a little bit of a passion and excitement for like free ebooks as i offer one on my own site lol but um maybe even like spice it up of some kind of like free webinar or free like toolkit to do at free notion templates i don't know whatever your niche is something to give them a little incentive don't ever do just like stay updated with my content stay updated with me like never miss an update like no one cares <laughs> so give them an incentive give them a little something and you get their email return it's a great exchange that's the level you're at once you have this go to this don't start stressing about ebooks and monetization and all this stuff especially because sometimes you have no idea what your audience wants like I used to just make copywriting videos I'm just to use myself as an example because I don't want to violate client contracts but like you know I was making them and then I never had any intention really of teaching copy I just wanted to just come for the gurus on YouTube who are selling ten thousand dollar courses but I never thought teaching copywriting would ever be a thing that I ever had any idea and if I had started like this all backwards I never would have like sold courses and teaching copy like you people told me what you wanted to know and learn and then I did accordingly. So if you start in the wrong process, you're gonna spend all this time. I, you know, in the, my very beginning business stages, I built an ebook and I made like $50, but it took, oh, I don't know, two months of work. Don't do that. Wait until the audience tells you what they want from you. And then they're passionate and then they buy it and then everybody's happy and then you don't waste your time. Pro tip, okay. So after you have some opt-ins, I would say a good ballpark is like 100 email subscribers, 100 to 500 email subscribers is a golden number to start just with like, then what does that say? Paid content, your next step of paid content, which is like, um, you know, I wrote there nine to $97 ballpark of eBooks usually are the thing or like webinars or some kind of like something. It depends on what, you know, niche you're in and topic and things that you cover in order to be able to sell them. I, you know, like I told you, did a ebook on like launching your online business, which was so bad. And so I've learned this mistake. And then, you know, years later, people were like, how do I get clients? And I like wrote a whole thing on like, you know, it's on my site, $30. Um, you know, my entire getting client process of like going out and getting them, not like the evergreen them coming to you. I'll do that one day. But for now, it's just like most people are in the stage where they just need clients. Anyway, 
paid content. Now you've got some email subscribers, you've got some people following. Now you can focus on like, what do you want? And you can send them a survey. That's why it's so good to have an audience because you send them an email or a survey and you're like, what do you want? And they're like, here's what we want. And you're like, great, I will make that. And then pro tip, pro tip, you can do pre-orders. So, because a lot of people will say they'll buy stuff and they're like really excited and they really want it. And then like it comes to like, okay, now buy it. And they're like, ah. So take everything with a grain of salt. But if you hear something enough, it usually means there's interest, but then do pre-orders. That's why I did pre-orders on my copywriting course, which is opening next week. Um, but like pre-orders gives you money and a deadline so make sure that it's a deadline you can actually hit and like not mess up because then you don't want to start demolishing trust with your audience that's a bad look but that's when you can start thinking about it because you've got people you've got maybe some pre-orders you've got some good cash flow it is starting you're monetizing it is happening okay and then from there once you've got that you do another few months maybe a year or two of like that level and then this is not a short process anybody if you want to build a website it's building a business that is not a short quick it can be accelerated depending on your time i'm assuming that this is a side hustle i'm assuming that this is not your full-time work i'm assuming this is like two to three hours every few days of like effort you can put in right like let's not i'm not assuming like you're a full-time blogger you you know that's you just like accelerate this way different um but same thing, just accelerated. Uh, then you can get into like live courses, which is a hundred plus dollars. Obviously, I think you all know how courses work. Um, and then coaching, consulting. You know, in my own business, I jumped here for mentorship right out the gate. Of mainly because I really, really want, which you can offer. Just know you're going to be offering it at like a deeper discount than like you would normally for your hourly rate, only because. Uh, all of those people were test subjects for the rest of this and thank you all so much. I hope it provided value anyway. Um, yeah, of course I helped them hit their goals of whatever it was. Um, but, you know, you and of course you can like jump around here and there, but this is the general like, depending on where you're at, don't stress yourself out levels. Cool. And also people need to spend like a little money with you here and there before they just give you a thousand dollars. Normally that's very hard for people to just, you know, we all work incredibly hard for the most part for like our money. So like making sure, you know, someone, a lot of people who bought my pipeline book were in my course because like they bought it. Hopefully they found some value in it. They, they think I'm not full of it and that's, thank you. <laughs> and then they join the course like, okay, I can, tr I can trust this. I'm not trying to get demonetized. Now, I can dress this girl once in like, a little bit. Okay, cool. I'll give her a little more money and then let's see if she provides. Okay, cool. You did the process. And then optional, of course, services. If you're someone who's trying to build your copywriting website or you're offering a service like custom made tables or something like that's a little different. You kind of want to put those up a little bit higher, at least to have there to like hire me on your website. You know, don't expect too many leads until you start building that traffic. But that's different. That's a little different than just like you're trying to build, you know, you're not offering a service or also advertising, which we'll get to down there in the monetization, which is should be the last thing on your mind, kind of. You know, obviously a lot of us start blogs because we would like to make money or get free stuff. Like I get free stuff because I write in the tech world. I've got hundreds of free products because I just write about products. So like it's anyway, advertising. That's another option that you could fit in a little bit higher up. But also sometimes with ads, you can lose trust of people just like, you know, when you're watching a YouTuber. And all, like, also get your money, YouTubers. Like, I understand why you need ads. But sometimes it can be a little too soon to build. And then it's just like a start. Like, I'm monetizing you to people. Instead of I'm building a trust. Even though, let's be real, every trust building. Every person on the internet is trying to make money. Okay? Like, period. End of story. Everybody is. So... Okay, anyway, moving on. Content. Cool. So we're at the, this is the content state. This is what I plan out. And this is what, and I hope this is all the right way when I go to, like, because it's backwards while I'm looking at it. But this is the first level, right? Now it's content time. 
horrible handwriting. I'm not feminine. It's fine. So <laughs> types. These are the types of content, right? Besides the platforms, like your everything that you do on all of these are going to fall into here. This is from all of my blogging days and years that I've done. And so the first one is evergreen. Evergreen content means it's going to last forever. Like you're always going to Google like how to replace, if you were running like a home repair blog. Okay, <laughs> random. Uh, um, like how to replace your blinds. Evergreen, that is not like time bound. Like everybody will always have blinds. Like it will always be a Googleable thing, right? How to get into copyright, no, that's more hero. But Evergreen is like, it's ongoing forever. It never gets old. That kind I mean, it can, but it takes like years maybe, you know, I don't know. How to clean my glasses, which are gross, but like, you know, evergreen just means ongoing, constantly doodleable, constantly like the, the bedrock of kind of your industry. Like as a writer, maybe it's like how to write a landing page, evergreen content. And then hero content is like ultimate 3000 word plus blog, maybe 10,000. Sometimes that's too much, but like you know, my how to get into copywriting video that is on this channel that has some insane amount of views because it's like 40 minutes and it's everything that I know about how to get into copywriting, right? It really is, but guys, like when people are shocked that like when we were together, I'm like, that was, that literally was it. There's no secrets. Um, It is the be all end all. Like if you were, you know, writing a fitness blog you'd be like okay how to lose weight like it is the you it's like the bible of everything that it is and usually you have like five to ten of them maybe per year they're extremely long and epic they're incredibly seo rich they're lovely all that stuff so they're hero content they should take a month maybe even more maybe that's dramatic but like a long time to put together to write their everything and then you have fresh and newsworthy, which is just like, you know, if you're writing like an entertainment blog, like, oh, Reese Witherspoon released a new book. It's newsworthy. It will be irrelevant in about a month. And, but like, does it help keep things like, oh, I'm launching my copywriting course. That inspires. Here's the thing. It's newsworthy. It's, it's within like a time bound. And those are the three main types of content. There's a million more. Okay. There's like how-tos, Q&As, articles, blah. Okay, there's so much. But when I plan content for a site, uh, those are the main ones that I think about. Tech support. Okay, and then <laughs> running out of time. Platforms. Now, of course, this will be different depending on what you're doing and what platforms you want to care about. These are the ones I focus on when I plan content for clients or whatever unless they have like a podcast or something special extra but um youtube if they want to do video i think google i think youtube is still the best thing ever <laughs> i'm a little biased but um i find it much easier than like blogs and all that time. Eh, as a writer lol but youtube i think should be even if you don't want to talk and film yourself you can do like other kinds of like anyway youtube blog newsletter i mean you just kind of want to have these categories even if you haven't started a newsletter yet you just want like it on the list and then social the ones i like instagram TikTok, facebook groups whether it's your own or you're participating in others discord and twitter those i think are great other people have other ones and of course if you're like doing recipes or a mommy blog or something you're gonna have pinterest you're gonna have others on there but i take all these I think about my categories for blogs or content, which is like, okay, for like this channel, it's like um, monetizing side hustles, copywriting, obviously, storytelling, business, business books. Um, like those are main categories and then all kinds of like content fall under each one of those. Cool. So that's what you should be focusing. That should take up the whole chunk of your time. And then you test and refine, right? And you're like, okay, like I never expected my how to get in a copywriting video to like randomly somehow get in the algorithm and take off. But so 
I ideally you publish content for like six months of like each category and each type of content get your toes wet and everything and then you may cut it off you know I believe in a huge testing phase because you sometimes have no idea I don't care what anybody and their nerdy stats show me lots of people are wrong often on what they think will work and not work I've worked with tons of clients for all like you know, and all of a sudden are like the Tumblr posts we were writing like took off out of nowhere and it's like none of the stats predicted that would be the case. Anyway, stats are dumb. <laughs> Shots fired. <laughs> Sometimes they're fine, they're fine, they're fine, they're fine. But you know, like just test, get your feet wet in all of this before you even worry about this. The first level, this, six months of this, rinse and repeat. Okay. Now we're on to marketing and growth. I'm gonna try and talk a lot faster. I got a call. Okay. Um seo bleh, okay just learn some seo go out there learn the basics which just means like use the right words for what you're describing and teaching more than anything like a lot of seo is very complicated it's like the back end of a web website you need to be like a web developer to put in like tags and html stuff and all this nerdy stuff so learn the super basics know what words you're targeting and then no, you can go back and refine, okay? Like, don't get in your head too much about it if you're at the newbie stages. Like, once you start monetizing the paid content and live courses, you can go back and fix up all of your posts and stuff to do more SEO friendly. Anyway, SEO. <laughs> LinkedIn. I don't think LinkedIn's really so much a social media site as it is a purely market, especially if you're in the services industry, which I am, so I'm biased to how I think LinkedIn works best. Um, it's much more of a networking platform than it is like, here's my dog. Pew, pew. Yeah. I'm, hopefully you're not, I'm, that's all I post. But like, <laughs> it's a little bit different in my opinion and LinkedIn still has incredible organic growth. So I think it's more of like a growth than content even though it's kind of the both and they're both kind of the same. Anyway, guest blogging. Get very strategic about guest blogging if you're in the paid RE area and you're trying to grow heavily or be a guest on podcasts. And, in the very beginning, aim for any podcast, but at a certain point, have a limit of like, okay, you need at least like more than 10 viewers on your podcast before I'm gonna like sit and chat for two hours. Um, you know, networking, of course, just like, which means for when I've worked with blogs on the like organic, the growth part of it, it means like asking people for links, maybe, maybe you're doing guest blogging and you're dropping your links in your blog or um commenting on blogs commenting on videos commenting on instagram networking 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 no one cares who you are no one knows who you are you have to do all that hard work in the beginning to get the ball rolling direct pitching which is like once again if you're offering services just you need to start direct pitching people like i mean if you have the time to wait until you make any money off of it like take your sweet time do some nice networking before you're pitching, but like if you want to monetize this in the next few months, pitch. Cool. And then website. That means like making sure your website's pretty, making sure your about page is written, making sure your hire me page is written, making sure your portfolio is done. As you go, you know, like you may not have that immediately right out the gate, but you need to make sure that you're working on that like on the back end as you go. Okay. <laughs> Five minutes. Great. All right. <laughs> And then the monetization, which uh, apologies for finally getting here and blazing through, but I think they're pretty simple. Um, these are all the ways you can monetize once you get into like the monetization area, you know. And these are just the general steps. You may jump around and play with all these as accordingly as whatever works for you. So, monetizing ads. I don't like ads, they pay hell. Even on this YouTube channel, uh, the ads are a joke. It's like, I've probably made what I make in a week <laughs> on two years of content. Of course, once you hit the big numbers, it starts to be a little bit nicer, a few hundred dollars a month, all of that kind of stuff. But like, is it worth it right out the date? No. <laughs> Not until you have the big numbers and then ads kind of made sense. Depending. Um, sponsors and posts. Um, and I put them kind of as separate because you can do sponsored posts on your blog, which means that people pay you to like, either drop a link or write a post. Be careful, almost all of them are extremely low quality and if you're writing low quality crap on your website, it's going to drag your analytics down the tubes, okay? Like, I know a lot of people who will accept posts for like, 
gambling and these shady sites and know that Doodle knows that you're doing that and is going to punish your entire site. So all of this work that you've done of like, wow, and building an audience and all that and Doodle's like, eat it because we don't, we don't mess with your site. You're publishing low quality crap. So I, for that reason, don't really hate sponsored posts. Maybe at some point I will, but for the most part, it's crap. All right. Ebooks, very clear and given. Services, very clear and given. Um, memberships, sometimes that works. If you have, you know, I've seen, I just saw one the other day that was like a membership site for succulents and I was like this close to subscribe because I was like, ooh, I want to be in a group and talk with other people about plants. So you never know. Just because, you know, you think that your niche doesn't fit into that, it might fit into that. Cool. Um, affiliate marketing. Now, that's a huge complicated one because there's a lot that goes with that. You need to find your affiliates. The most well-known one is Amazon, which means if you have a you have a link, you sell something on Amazon, which is a joke. Like the other day, I just sold a $100 air purifier and made like two dollars or like ten cents I don't know the payout even at my peak was like of Amazon marketing was like I think the best was like seventy dollars a month or something it was something so not even worth it however I have found some other ones that are like fifty percent of a few hundred dollars so if you buy something that's like a few hundred dollars I get like two hundred you know so just hunt for better affiliate deals if you decide to go that route Know that you have to build the trust with people before you can just start hawking products at them. Cool. Physical products, It's that's hard to get into the world of selling physical products. I mean, that's a whole nother ballpark, but know that you can. That's an opportunity to monetize. Um, and then events. You know, now everybody's doing digital events, which is cool, and like, why not? And then donations or Patreon. And that is your other last option. I'm pretty sure that's pretty much everything and every way you can monetize a website, you know, outside of like OnlyFans or something. But even that's just like donations, Patreon. So awesome. That is pretty much it. Focus on the level you're at. Build your content. Build the hub. This stuff pays off in the long run. Even though it's so much upfront work and so much man maintaining work and so much. But like... And don't have to do all of them. Pick the ones that like, you know, test a few. Pick ones that you feel like are getting traction and like double, triple, quadruple down on them. Go crazy. Do these as you can. And then finally end up here so all of that effort is worth it. And your site makes you some money. Cool. Okay, that's pretty much it. Um, Anything else? No, that's it. That's how to monetize a site for the most part. Almost everything. I mean, of course, there's always, like, paid ads, but I don't find that, you know, I'm I'm coming at this more with the angle of you're doing this on the side more than you, like, want to throw money at it and lose money as you, you know. And even if you are throwing paid ads at everything and you have, like, your website is crap and you don't have any content to grab them in and, you know, what's the point? <laughs> I see all that all the time. I see Facebook ads and I go to the site and I'm like... Hello? Is anybody here? Don't do that. So fill that up and then go crazy. Okay, that is it. Bye, guys.